Certification is about processes of land degradation which are bringing productive land into desert like condition. That's why it is desertification. It's not about the desert, it's about productive land being turned into desert like conditions. We can avoid it by doing, by doing two things. Number one, we can avoid it by having uh, land use uh, processes which will prevent the loss of the biological function of the soil. And the second is also that as we are having more pressure on land, we must ensure that we alleviate that pressure by also restoring land that we have already degraded. And that's why combating desertification is twofold. Avoiding land degradation, but also re restoring already degraded land. We, we must reach out to land users. We must also learn from land users. M many innovations are happening at the grassroots level because some of the land users, some of the smallholder farmers are striving to cope anyway out of their meager resources. Then in research, we must make sure that we understand why smallholder farmers are doing what they are doing, the way they are doing it before advising them. Uh, so if we go that way, we will be likely to be successful in avoiding the desertification. On, on the other hand, we must be aware that desertification is driven by lack of investment, but it's also driven by misplaced investment and misplaced policies. So we need to get our policies right, we need to get our incentive right, so much so that we will be able to drive not degradation but drive restoration. And finally, there will be need for more land. How, where are we going to get those land? Are we going to encroach on existing forests? That's how we have deforested in the past. By the way, 80%, 70 to 80% of deforestation is due to cropland expansion. How do you address it? By precisely ensuring that you intensify, and you intensify sustainably production. But the second aspect is whenever there's a need for new land for uh, agricultural expansion, that you go and you restore already degraded land which still hold potential for restoration. In the real world, there's nowhere where you see the climate separately and the land separately. In the real world, it is holistic, it is integrated. So we must work together. Though the issues are specific, the mandate are specific, Specific, but in addressing it, we, we need to work towards what has been called the synergies. And synergies are needed where? At grassroots level, where people are taking action uh, to adapt to climate change and also to mitigate. We know that agriculture is second in potential for mitigation uh, of uh, greenhouse gases em emission and is first potential for nationally appropriate mitigation from the, the developing world. We also know that you can't have pro-poor adaptation if you do not attend to uh, smallholder farmers. So there's a need for synergy. And the Rio Convention being the Convention on Climate Change, the one on biodiversity and the one on desertification, we do have what is called uh, the Joint Liaison Group where um, the executive secretary do meet to find how we could help government to take uh, better action in ensuring synergistic approaches. And thus, they call from Rio Plus 20 to go land degradation neutral. What does it mean? It means precisely to set target in areas where, for instance, there is vulnerability for degradation, to map those areas, to do the needful to, ad to avoid the degradation, but also to restore where it is potentially possible to restore the already degraded land. And this will imply not only adaptation to climate change, mitigation of uh, emission of greenhouse gases, but it also ensure food security, water availability, and water quality. And beyond, it will reduce you know, uh, uh, resource-based conflict and migration. Thank you.